if you've ever been laughed off the airsoft field because you were caught running rope plates at an airsoft game, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, make sure to like and comment. The comment section down below is a special school for special children. And if you guys are looking for a way to support the channel, guys, head over on to Airsoft GI. They have all your LARP Raider kit, you know, new Airsoft guns, tactical gear, parts for your LARP Raider tendies, you know the drill, and free shipping over any order over $99. Now, is it worth it? Well, are you worth it? Lady, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, non-blowback CO2 pistols. Today, we're gonna to be talking about maybe a low-key heated debate topic in the airsoft community. Uh, we are not gonna be talking about this gem of a gun here, especially with that Jag Arms Master Key. Today, instead, we're gonna be going over tactical vests versus play carriers. Now, all of us here at Airsoft GI at some point have run one of these bad boys in the past. For me, I was running something extremely similar to this, like a cross draw vest. I believe it was by NC Star, and it was a tan color one. Kevin wore something similar in a black variation, and Cisco ran one in the OD green. So we're going to be talking about the advantages, disadvantages, and possibly why you might con be considering running one or the other at Airsoft Field. Let's get into it. So, what I have in front of me right here is the Lancer Tactical Cross Draw Vest. This is included in virtually a lot of our starter kits out there at Airsoft GI. And it has pretty much everything you need to get playing. So it has one, two, three M4 mag pouches. It can also fit AK mags, G36 mags, SIG mags, you name it. And now here on the left hand side we do have an additional fourth magazine pouch and a cross draw holster. So this allows you to draw from the cross, the cross draw, right? And I would kind of call it like the cowboy draw because if you watch a lot of Western movies, they always draw from the opposite side of their hip. Now, you might be wondering, well, if this is pretty much all you need to get playing, why would you upgrade? And initially for me, that's what I thought too. So I initially started out playing Airsoft wearing one of these and I would do my mag changes super slow because you know, since I'm a right-handed guy, and I'll be holding my gun with my right hand, and when I would do a mag change, I would have to drop this magazine first on the ground, and then I'd have to reach over from my side, pull a Velcro tab, and then get a new magazine. Now, this can work, but oftentimes it is counterintuitive and it spends a lot of time for me in cover and having to focus on reloading rather than pay attention to what's going on in the field. So I'd oftentimes reload. It'll take me maybe anywhere to three to five seconds and by the time I pop back up, ready to shoot again, the person I was shooting at already moved on. So that, that that's one one of the main grips I had about a cross rod vest like this. Um, but one thing I really loved about this is that it is very flush to your body. So because of how it just fits over your body, it is mostly made out of like nylon webbing, nylon mesh. Uh, it, it's very conforming to your body, so when it comes to shouldering a rifle, it's actually very natural. So if I were to point my rifle up here, nothing's really getting in the way. So I can naturally just aim and not adjust my, my head or adjust my hips or my body. It's, it's very intuitive. So that's one thing I really loved about the cross draw platform. Now, as time moved on, I kind of wanted it to feel a little more rigid, more true to life, so to say. So there are pockets inside of this vest where you could stuff pieces of cardboard, which is something that I did, you know, just to add a little bit more rigidity. And eventually, now a lot of the people who do look into this solution, uh, they usually are beginner players, so they just have a rifle and that's it. Uh, for me, I just ran a Springer pistol just because that's all I had and I couldn't really afford a gas blowback pistol at the time. So I just had a spring 1911. But this cross draw vest, unfortunately, with the cross draw holster will not fit your Gucci Glocks, will not fit your Gucci high cappas over here. I have my Gucci'd out SIG M17 with a light and a, with the optic. 
And if I try to put this in the holster, it's not going to fit the light. And even if I took the light off, it's not going to fit the optic. So you have to unfortunately run your typical FUD style. Like there's a Leap Force Glock right here. No attachments, nothing bare bones. It'll fit that just fine. Or even like a 1911, which is what you're really supposed to carry with these holsters over here. Now, even if you were to find a holster that will fit, uh, even let's say an Elite Force Glock or whatnot, uh, these pistol mag pouches unfortunately will not hold the double stack magazine very well. So over here, I have a double stack gas magazine. I'm going to put that right there and it has a hard time really closing or keeping that magazine secure. So make sure to do a little bit of research. We're just out here telling you what you're going to be running into if you're looking into this for pistol storage. And over here on the right hand side, you got your typical admin pouch over here on the side. So I have mail gang pads, all my mail gang members out there. And this, I would use it to, you know, store my Skittles, my M&Ms, maybe a couple chicken nuggies, you know the deal. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a nice all-in-one system. Uh, it does also come with the battle belt integrated into the vest. Uh, just to give it a little bit of retention with these like little sideways uh, utility pouches. Uh, which is nice, uh, but eventually uh, I think if you continue playing, uh, you will start to wonder what else is out there that will suit your needs. Now the next iteration of the cross rod vest would be something sim similar to this, which is this one is a Condor tactical vest. And as you can see, there are no integrated pouches and there is molly webbing from the nipples down. Now. You might be wondering, why would you want this over a traditional cross draw vest? Well, the first thing that I would say that has an advantage over a traditional cross draw vest is magazine placement. So, if you notice, back in the first segment where I had my black cross draw vest, all the magazines were on my right hand side. And that, over time, you'll realize that it slows down your magazine reload speed if you are right hand dominant like me. Now, this will give you the ability to purchase an additional magazine pouch and run it on your left hand side if you're right handed. So that way if you are to shoulder your rifle, and again these kind of vests are nice because it just allows you to naturally shoulder your rifle without really moving, you can grab a magazine from your left hand side and easily put it into your gun and that will drastically reduce the amount of reload time that's needed for you to get back and start shooting plastic again. Now, this one doesn't have the integrated admin pouch or these uh, chest height pistol magazine pouches, but uh, this is sort of the way that tactical gear will progress on as you get to the higher tiers or the higher echelons of tactical gear from the airsoft side even to the real steel side as people like the word modularity or scalability. So they like the option of having to run whatever pouches that suit them, their play style, and their mission set. Oh, that sounded really cringe. But that's just what it is. So uh, the vest platform itself should run very similar, similar to the cost of a pre-built uh, cross draw vest. But the drawback is you will still need to purchase pouches to tailor it to your needs. Fun fact, that was actually the very first vest I ever bought. So for me, after getting out of the cross draw tactical vest, ecosystem for me I moved on to something like a plate carrier similar to this so this is actually one of the first plate carriers I've bought uh, this is the Condor Sentry plate carrier and it is a very very affordable plate carrier and it allows you to have pretty much exactly what you need on the field without having to bulk up anymore with unnecessary pouches or pieces of fabric or nylon so on the sides here, on this plate here, it's just secured by these buckles, so you just buckle in and out. Uh, it's nice and quick. Uh, the plate here itself is very aggressively cut, especially for back in like 2011 when I bought this. And it allows you to put in plates. Now, a lot of you guys out there that run plate carriers in Airsoft, obviously we don't really run real plates. Uh, so right here I have, uh, I believe these are either the Lancer Tactical or the Emerson foam plates. Uh, they are available also in hard plastic, which is something that I prefer. I just like that bit of rigidity. And also there are at-home remedies, such as cutting pieces of cardboard or taking your uh, childhood 
uh, play mat foam and cutting it down to a plate size, uh, which is exactly what I did when I was a kid back in the day. So, why would you put plates in an airsoft plate carrier? Because I see a lot of you JPC guys out there running a JPC like a chess rig. Well, the plate carrier itself, at least in the real steel world, which airsoft is deriving a lot of their products from, is that a plate carrier is designed to hold a plate. So everything is built and designed to work around the plate inside the plate carrier. So it gives you that bit of rigidity so it becomes a nice hard mounting platform uh, to keep your gear, keep your pouches and accessories exactly where they need to be at all times. So a uh, common problem with a lot of people who don't run plates on their plate carrier is that they will get the, the fatal floppage. So if they're running around or getting into weird positions, crouching while shooting and whatnot, uh, the vest will eventually either crumple up or sag and we don't really want that because it doesn't look cool. So here on this Sentry plate carrier, uh, obviously this is a very minimalist setup. Uh, so it doesn't really have a lot of excess bulk or excess material that you don't need when it comes out to play. So for me, I just got a triple magazine pouch over here that's open topped for faster, easier reloads. So I would just carry three M4 magazines with me. Uh, there was a time where I ran six magazines just in front of me, but it made me too thick. So I eventually got rid of that. Here on the top, I have an admin pouch that I molly webbed on here. And, you know, it just, it just kept, you know, the Gucci chicken tendies, chicken nuggies, any uh, in-game snacks I would like to eat, or if there were uh, things like, I don't know, IDs, wallet, phone, whatever you want, you can put in here. And overall, it just looks cool. And in addition, uh, because this plate carrier is strictly just Molly, this will allow me to put on any Gucci patch I wanted to rock on the field to let people know I'm cool. So. Here on the side, guys, here are some hydration loops, which are a feature that a lot of uh, tactical vests don't offer you, is that they're uh, not designed to have hydration pack in mind. So if you guys are playing longer games, or you guys like to run uh, water on your back panel, uh, this will allow you to conveniently store your hydration hose so that way it doesn't flop around on you when you run. Now, something like this is great, but however, a big drawback, um, unlike the cross rod vest, is when it comes to shouldering your gun, you kind of have to negotiate with the plate carrier a little bit. So because of the shoulder shoulder pads and also the, the shape of these plates, uh, you kind of have to practice a lot when it comes to shouldering your rifle. So even for me, I kind of have to adjust a little bit to shoulder properly, and sometimes it just becomes a giant pain. Now, why would you want something like this? Well, uh, even though the tactical vest itself is ample production when it comes to getting shot with BBs, uh, in my opinion, I think a plate carrier uh, does the job a lot better. Uh, it'll still be able to tell you when you're hit, but you don't have to come home with five or six extra nipples when you take your shirt off. And it's minimal enough to where it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a second jacket or whatnot. It just feels like a little extra additional piece of kit um, because my sides of my boobs and the sides over here and even down to my uh, survival pouch. Uh, it allows for that extra breathability and overall it keeps you feeling lighter and faster on the field. And lastly, when it comes to the final evolution of the Larperator Air Softer is a real steel plate carrier setup. So over here I have the Ferro Concepts Slickster and I have it kitted out with uh, HSGI tacos and a nice little dangler pouch and I have a, a TMC banger back panel here on the back and I'm running a comm setup. I have some basic medical kit. Uh, I have a medical equipment inside here and you know I just have a tourniquet over here. Uh, so this is mainly uh, focus off my uh, when it comes to real steel shooting. However, uh, eventually you'll get to the point where you know the airsoft stuff isn't really cutting it for you. So why would you run, want to run something like this over, let's say, like the Condor Sentry? Well, eventually if you play long enough and you really deeply understand your play style and how you play, uh, you're going to eventually realize that uh, there are ways that you can have your gear tailored to your play style rather than having your play style tailored around 
your setup or your gear. So uh, oftentimes if you go farther down the budget, so if you end up getting a very budget plate carrier or a very budget chest rig or a very budget uh, tactical vest, uh, the unfortunate reality is that you will have to tailor your play style around your gear. So for example, with my tactical vests, I had to slow down my reloads and stay down and cover for longer in order to accommodate for my gear having mag pouches on the wrong side of my body and I just have to live with it. So uh, oftentimes guys uh, in airsoft you do get what you pay for and when it comes to more real steel application, real steel gear uh, made by actual real dudes whether they're in the military or special forces or whatnot, uh, they are very uh, focused on creating or making gear that works around their uh, their work style or at least in our, the airsoft side our play style so why did I choose something like the Feral Concept Slickster so the reason why I chose something like this is because of how versatile the system is so uh, this front flap over here is actually removable it's contained by these uh, these little things called G-hooks and I could swap placards out or sw swap front panels out for uh, anything I would need so since I am a uh, private collector of sorts, I will have uh, a 308 or a DMR setup that runs SR25 magazines or I'll have an SMG so I'll need pistol caliber carbine or longer extended pistol pouches or uh, for all my yeah, shotgun users out there uh, I can just completely just rip this front shingle off completely and just have exposed velcro and I can just velcro on shotgun loops and I can run a gas blowback shotgun. So, Again, this vest is very accommodating to all sorts of different play styles and it's very uh, tailored to that. Uh, also, additionally, on here on the side, I have an elastic cummerbund, which is nice. Uh, it hugs you that nice and soft, uh, almost like how my parents never really hugged me growing up. So it does give you some emotional support in addition to structural support as well. Now, this cummerbund by Ferro Concepts is actually very unique and is very innovative, very forward thinking because these have pockets in them. So instead of having molly on the side and you attaching pouches which add extra bulk and have your arms stick out more uh, and increases your profile, makes you a bigger target, uh, they have decided instead to create this nice elastic pocket system to fit anything you need. So over here I have my Bailfang radio uh, neatly tucked in and I have two extra magazines uh, which I basically move down to my battle belt every time I reload off my belt. And over here on this side I have a, I have a tourniquet. Now this is very great because uh, it, it does become like a one size fits most. So if I uh, am not running this plate here and I want to give it to a buddy or lend it out to a buddy, uh, it's very easy to size. I don't have to go back to the back of the plate carrier and readjust, pull strings or whatever. Uh, it's just stretchy vel it's just stretchy Velcro with stretchy uh, elastic on it, and it'll pretty much fit most normal sized people. Now. Again, this is all stuff that is tailored around you as a player. Uh, if your play style uh, is already perfectly suited, perfectly tailored to uh, your tactical vest, shout out to all my airsoft FUDs out there. Go ahead and uh, put your FUD comment down below. Uh, and, and yeah, and if it works for you, it works for you. And uh, I'm, I'm just talking as my experience as an airsofter who's been playing for uh, over 10 to 12 years is that eventually uh, you kind of get tired of having to adjust the way you play or adjust the way you run your kit uh, based around the limitations of your kit. So eventually uh, it is a very freeing experience when you uh, do get to keep the way you play, keep the way that you run your, uh, run your gun, your airsoft gun, and just have a kit that is designed around that. And that's something that I feel like uh, eventually if you get uh, enough years playing airsoft or even when it comes to the real steel world shooting guns, uh, that is something that uh, you'll eventually have to uh, kind of wrestle with, kind of deal with, and uh, yeah, but if you guys ever end up creating your own custom kit, your Gucci kit, uh, make sure to send it our way to on our Instagram page, airsoftgi.com, and uh, we'll uh, give you that Gucci validation everyone wants. Guys, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for sticking through my exhaustive little Grantham impression. Uh, again, we're just here talking about airsoft kit, uh, differences between an airsoft tactical vest and a plate carrier. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys prefer to run and why you guys choose to run it. Again, this is in no way telling you about what you should or what you shouldn't run. At the end of the day, everyone plays differently and 
uh, again, the, the kit is designed to tailor around your play style. So uh, if, if you guys have a $30 chest rig, $30 cross drop vest, and it perfectly suits you, hey, more freedom to you. To be honest, I wish I was like that so that way I don't have to spend so much money on all this Gucci kit. But yeah, we upload every new video on Wednesdays and Fridays. Live stream on Thursdays, so make sure to always stay tuned for that. And we will see you guys next time. All right, guys, we have another shooting challenge today. We have two cans. I'm going to have one chance to shoot a can, do a quick reload, and then another shot to shoot the other can. Let's see how we do. All right, shooter ready? Yeah. And go. That counts, right? I hit it. Wasting water.